technology. <laughs> We're live? All right. Good morning. Good morning and welcome to worship. This is what we call Christ the King Sunday. That means it's the end of the liturgical church year, which then means next Sunday, believe it or not, is the first Sunday of Advent. So um, you know, every year we go through this cycle of the birth and life and death and resurrection, and today is the day where we celebrate Christ supreme. Um, and so as we come together, it is also our Stewardship Sunday, since this is the week of Thanksgiving. It's the time for us to think about uh, the things in which we are grateful for and the ways in which we would like to respond to God's love for us and the work of our ministry here in this place. So you can see we have both food items and the deacons are doing the wellness drive. This is only a small, I wouldn't even say 1% <laughs> of the items that have come in. We have just received so much um, in the chapel, um, at least 10 bags full of shampoos and soaps and toiletry items. So thank you all for your generosity. I just like to show the congregation and, and to bless it before we send it off. Um, the deacons will be bringing everything over to social services tomorrow morning, and we also have two turkeys to donate as well. So um, thank you deacons for organizing this. Sue said she has some announcements. Uh, yes, I want to remind people it was two weeks from yesterday is going to be home for the holidays. So again, if anyone can bake, just let me know. If you could bring it on Friday, I'll be here from about 5 o'clock till 7.30. Uh, or early Saturday morning so we can get it out, know, so we can have it for our bake sale. And we still need some people to help. We're going to be selling uh, hot chocolate, coffee, and tea, and so forth. Um, I know today is stewardship, and I don't want to take away from that, but I did want to mention we do wreaths across America at our cemetery, the Methodist, and also the uh, Pleasant Hill one on Hillside Avenue. We put a wreath on all the veterans that are uh, in our cemeteries to honor them. And if anyone would like to donate a wreath, uh, please see me. I'd appreciate it. And also, I want to tell you, we are going to have a little coffee hour afterwards. And Rob Doyle's mother made a cake, so we're going to use it to celebrate. It's somebody's birthday this week, Carrie. Oh, <laughs> it is? <laughs> Thank you for the reminder. I forgot all about my birthday. <laughs> I have so much to do. <laughs> so if you've been paying attention to the rolling announcements, there is just, this is the season where just so much happens. So we have home for the holidays, but we also have our giving tree. So Ken and Michelle, thank you for putting together our giving tree. If you didn't notice it when you came in the doors, um, there's little tags. And on December 4th, we do what's called the toy drive. I have a picture up here from last year's toy drive. Uh, toy March, um, so you just adopt um, an age. It doesn't have a specific toy request, it's just an age. Um, but anything from stuffed animals to books, uh, we just ask that it not have any kind of weapon in it. So it's just um, a fun way for us to donate back to the community for someone else's Christmas. Um, other announcements? John. I just want to say thank you for everyone who donated to the big drive of the launch. There were buttons of things, so that's great. And uh, it's like you said, we're going to be going a long way. Yeah. Great. Yes, Dick. Yes, next Sunday after worship. Um, we will be doing what's called the greeting of the church, and we'll be putting up everything except the Christmas tree next, sun next Sunday. Next Sunday after worship, yeah. So, all right. Um, if I missed anything, it was up there. And so I'm going to invite Kathy Ritchie to come and do what we call a moment for stewardship.
Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Welcome to this warm church on this cold Sunday. <laughs> um, when I was asked why I give to the church, uh, my one sentence response was, I give because the church provides me the spiritual nourishment I need to grow as a disciple of Christ and do the work needed to share his message of peace and justice. I've been a member of this church for uh, nearly 30 years and a, a member of the mission committee for just about that long. We do work to help those in our community and beyond with issues surrounding hunger, homelessness, and social justice. All these things keep my attention. But just as important is the spiritual guidance and nourishment the church provides me and my family. Nourishment that helps me better understand Christ, his teachings, and helps me grow in my faith. My husband Jim and I felt it was important to raise our children in the church for them to study the Bible, get a good Christian education, and develop a religious foundation that will help guide them throughout their lives. It was certainly a challenge to corral everyone and get them to church by 8.45 on Sunday mornings. My husband taught Sunday school for many years, and I think that encouraged the kids to participate. There were a few times during that must sleep in adolescent phase that uh, Jim left without them. <laughs> so we hung in there and they were confirmed, but we were fortunate to have this family, their church family, be a consistent part of their young lives. I think their years growing up in the church helped them to become, and I'm their mother, <laughs> more decent, caring adults. Today they struggle with the injustice they see in the world, but I believe that because of their experience in the church, they are guided in the direction of hope. So what about my own spiritual nourishment? One of the great gifts this church has given me is the opportunity to work alongside our youth during our summer mission adventures. And they are adventures. <laughs> it does my heart good. It feeds my faith to see them grow and mature in their faith and their commitment to do good and help others in need. Bible study is also an important part of the, this nourishment. I participate in the Thursday morning Bible study and Monday evening journey circle. Not only have I broadened my understanding of the Bible and Christ's teachings, I've gained new friendships. And last but not least, music nourishes my soul. I come from a family mostly Methodists and Presbyterians who sang, performed, or lifted their voices in times of joy and sorrow. We were never without a song to sing. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Coming together to sing is my favorite part of worship. It's an offering, an expression of my love of Jesus Christ and my God. I didn't appreciate how much the music of the church meant to me until we stopped singing during the pandemic. Oh yes, there were times I tried to fill that longing by listening to hymns at home and singing along, but it just wasn't the same. Music is about being together. We depend and rely on each other to complete a melody and create a harmony. I joined the chime choir, which was started during the pandemic when we could no longer sing. What a gift that has been to those of us who like to share our love of music. It's frustrating at times for me, but what new challenge isn't at first? We may look serious when we're performing, and at rehearsals we work hard, but we laugh and have fun too. Praise God from whom all blessings flow, from the doxology. I have received so many blessings from God. I find the spiritual nourishment and guidance I seek in the church, in this congregation. This is why I give and give joyfully. I make my pledge prayerfully and as generously as I am able. 
I hope you'll join me and do the same. Uh, just one last announcement. I knew there was something else. Um, tonight at 7 o'clock is our interfaith Thanksgiving service. And it's actually over in Ledgewood at the Church of Jesus Christ of the Latter-day Saints. Um, so your clergy council will have, um, I think, at least four of our congregations represented. And I'd like to encourage you all, if you um, are able, to join us tonight at 7. And our offering is uh, canned food items that will then be delivered to Roxbury Social Services. So if you need more information, just let me know. Let us now center ourselves in the music. Please join me responsively to read the call to worship, which is posted on the website of the Christian Brothers of the Midwest. God of the living, with all your creatures, great and small, we sing your bounty and your goodness. For in the harvest of land and ocean, in the cycles of the seasons and the wonders of each creature, you reveal your generosity. Teach us the gratitude that disciples envy. 
dispels envy, excuse me, that we may honor such gift as you cherish your creation and praise you in all times and places, that this day may be holy, good, and joyful. Together, let us give our praise to God through our worship. Our opening hymn is 150, Come Christians Join to Sing. Let us read together the unison prayer written by John Birch. Uncluttered our lives, Lord, we have too much, consume too much, expect too much. Grant us perspective to see the world through others' eyes than just our own. Grant us compassion where there is need to play our part, not turn aside. Grant his gratitude for what we have, our daily bread, the gift of life. Unclutter our lives, Lord. Give us space, simplicity, and thankful hearts. Hear these words from the first letter of John. If anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. As people in this body of Christ that seek to engage that forgiveness and the peace that Christ calls us into, let us now share the peace of Christ with one another. The peace of Christ be with you, and for those of you joining us from home or later in the, the day, the peace of Christ be with you as well. And our responsive hymn in the season of Thanksgiving is 554, Let All Things Now Living.
Our first scripture is from 2 Corinthians 9, verses 16 to 15. The point is this, the one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not regretfully, regretfully or under compulsion, for God's love is cheer, loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. As it is written, he scatters abroad, he gives to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for your great generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God through us. For the rendering of this ministry not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also overflows with many thanksgivings to God. Through the testing of this ministry, you glorify God by your ob obedience to the confession of the gospel of Christ and by the generosity of your partnership with them and with all others while they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God that he has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift.
Our second reading today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, beginning with verse 19. Jesus tells his followers, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So a few weeks ago, the Thursday morning Bible study started a series called The Generosity Challenge. In our first lesson, what caught my attention was paying, what caught my attention was paying attention to the difference between spending and giving. So as I began to reflect on these two actions, I defined for myself spending as something that we do more for ourselves, something that we do and consume. Right? I spend in order to get a commodity for myself. Whereas giving is when we spend, but the commodity is not for us, but rather a gift for another. Right? I have to spend money on a birthday present, but I am giving it to someone else. So in this season of Thanksgiving and Christmas, we spend a lot of time, energy, and resources on giving. Some people budget throughout the year, if they're smart, in order to spend more over this next month. There's this excitement. There's this positive energy. There's a love for others and a generosity that abounds in this season. As people give food to local food pantries, yesterday on my social media, I saw so many places either posting, come give now, or we're, in, we're currently having a food drive, or look at all the turkeys we've collected, or you know, just showing the mass amounts of food that people are donating, are giving to others, right? And so there's also, as we transition from Thanksgiving into Christmas, right, there's going to be all kinds of places where um, toys can be given to local agencies. We almost forget, we almost forget about how much we are spending because in this season, we really enjoy giving. We enjoy making others happy. We enjoy knowing that we have made someone else's holiday special. Right? We might know this statement, it is better to give than to receive. Now, over the past few years, nonprofits have found their way to engage in this season of generosity, right? We have Black Friday, now we have Small Business Saturday, we have Cyber Monday, and now there's Giving Tuesday, right? Even churches have tried to get in on this and create a Giving Tuesday campaign. We talked about it, and we keep talking about it, maybe we should think about doing it, um, but we haven't ever really pushed it. But why not? Right? Why not? So how do we take this season of generosity and give it and allow it to be a part of our faithful living throughout the year? Not just one month or two months, but a pattern of our life, a pattern of our living. How do we do that? And how do we continue to be a giving people when things become so much more expensive? Right? This past week, I heard on the news that this Thanksgiving is going to be the most expensive one in 30 years. 
And according to CBS News, Americans are bracing for costly Thanksgiving this year with double digit percent increases in the price of turkey, potatoes, stuffing, canned pumpkins, and other staples. The US government estimates food prices will be up 9.5 to 10.5% this year rather than the annual 2% that we are accustomed to. And, and several groups over the last few weeks, I've been a part of the conversation just how expensive eggs are. They have definitely gone up more than the 10.5%. But I think, right, we've all noticed in one way or another the increase in everyday items. Gas, as I mentioned, eggs, even meat and produce. And uh, the dollar store, right, is no longer the dollar store, it's $1.25. There are just so many factors at play creating this inflation, and I don't have the expertise, and I'm not an economist, and so I'm not going to give my opinion on that. I just know it's the reality in which we live. And as people of faith, we still have to figure out ways in which we can practice the act of giving. So even though we might be spending more on everyday items than we did a year ago, we also have to think about how that's going to impact the church next year, right? As uh, heating costs are going up, those sort of things, it's going to impact our financial situation in the year ahead. So... On this Stewardship Sunday, instead of discussing spending, how much are we going to spend on the heat, I want us to think of the concept of giving. Now, I went to the grocery store on Friday, and I spent $168. I intentionally did that because it would then qualify me to get my free turkey. Right? Um, but in spending that money, I am able to give. You think about the concept of giving. So I went to the grocery store, and yes, I spent more money than I usually would, but I am able to give my family a healthy, healthy meals for the week ahead. Right? Think of the, not how much it costs, but what I then am able to give from it. So I think about the healthy meals. And I'm now able to give someone else my turkey. And I'm able to contribute to tonight's interfaith Thanksgiving food offering. Right? So as I spend, I think about what then am I giving? Spending versus giving. Now we obviously live in a society that requires us to spend. But we don't just spend our money, we spend our time, we spend our energy, we spend our emotional selves each and every day. So as we spend those things, I want to encourage you to think about how are you also giving, right? I spend my time, but maybe I'm giving young people the opportunity to learn to play soccer. Right? So what is it that we get what, what is it that we get back as we spend? Right? I might have to spend on my mortgage, but it gives me a safe place to live. And how do we consistently try to retrain ourselves to focus throughout the year on the giving aspect of life rather than the spending? Now some people like to journal. And so that is one easy way to help train yourself in the practice of, okay, I'm barely able to cover this month's bills, but look at my blessings. Look at what it is giving me in my life. In stewardship, we often talk about our time, talent, and treasure. Well, our Sunday school teachers and our choir members, they give of their time and their talent in order to give of themselves, to teach our children, and as Kathy shared, right, to lead us in worship through music, but as she gives of her time 
She's also receiving, right? It helps her engage in worship. And as I teach Sunday school, I always receive back from the young people's insights and questions and um, ways that they view things in this world. There's this back and forth, this back and forth. There's such a positive relationship if we allowed that concept to work in our lives, right? A positive relationship between spending and giving. And this is the harmony of how I want us to think about our life within the church. As we maybe give to the church, you know, there's a harmony of how we're using those resources to uplift various groups and people in um, ways in which we do our ministry. But so often in our culture, we think that when we spend, or even when we give, we should definitely get something out of it. And that's not always the case in the church. Sometimes we just need to give freely of ourselves. Sometimes we need to give of our resources, of our time, and our energy, so that others get something out of it. If we're able to see the larger picture, then we might realize that, yeah, we really are getting something out of it, even if we can't tell at that particular moment in time. An example is this. During our mission week, we went to Camp Johnsonburg and we moved mulch. (laughs) Right? I gave of some time and some energy, maybe not as much as some others in the group did, but I did my best. And it left us completely exhausted and for me, practically unable to move for days afterwards, right? So we gave without really getting anything back other than a free lunch. No, I think we paid for that. (laughs) But, But it gives campers a safe trail to hike and explore and to embrace the gift of God's beautiful creation. Now, if I didn't have a kid that went to Camp Johnsonburg, I would never really get the response back, right? There wouldn't be much in it for me. But sometimes we do. We give because it's part of God's work. Now, as I mentioned earlier, today is what we call Christ the King Sunday. And we are at the end of the church liturgical year. And this is the day where we remember that after the resurrection of Easter, we remember the promise of all that God has given to us, right? How much has God given to us? Now, I want us to kind of stop and think. If we stop and think about how much God spends Think about what God spent to create this universe, to create this planet. And then what God spent to send God's self here amongst us. How much has God spent on this endless love for God's creation? Can we even begin to put a price on it? Except that God does not work the same way as we do in our world of economics, right? And so God doesn't spend. God gives. All of this, right? God gave us this creation. God gives each and every one of us this life. And God gave us all Jesus Christ. It's a gift. It's not a commodity to be had. But it's a gift to be received and embraced and a way for us to seek to model our lives, to reflect God's ability, God's abundance of giving. So on Christ the King Sunday, we remember that God has redeemed the whole creation through Christ. Through Christ. And now, as the word Christ the King describes it, right? 
Christ now reigns supreme. And we might wrestle with some of that outdated language of king and kingdom, but this is, this world is God's kingdom. Right? And so on this Sunday, we are to remember whose we are. Who is it that we give our allegiance to? Who is it that is the giver of all that we receive? Now, in both of today's scripture passages, the emphasis, if you look through them, is on giving. Just as God has given so much to us, we too are called to give of ourselves to God's work in this world. Now, some people have learned that the more they give, the more that they receive. And that's what Jesus is saying. What you sow, whether it's a little or a lot, is going to be what you reap. So if you give a little, you're probably going to just reap a small amount of gratitude. But if you get into that practice of living a generous life, of living a life of gratitude and giving, you're going to sense a greater joy, a greater abundance of reaping back. Not material things, but knowing that you're part of God's work in this world. The Corinthians passage speaks of God's abundance and how whether we have a little or a lot, we still have an abundance if we let go of the cultural understandings. Right? I might not have a lot of money, but that's a cultural thing. I still can give. It doesn't have to be of my money, but I can still give. I can give of my time. I can give of my love. I can give, as one of our young um, Sunday school youth said today, I can give of my trust. Right? We can just give. And we can give abundantly. It doesn't have to be a financial thing at all. The work of God is our spiritual well-being. Right? And God wants us to be spiritual givers and to live in God's spiritual abundance. So in this passage from Paul, he's writing a stewardship letter. And he is encouraging people to remember, as they invest in the ministry of God, it will multiply. Just as when one seed is planted, the harvest produces the stock, right? And there's more seeds from one seed. And then more can be planted. And then there'll be more seeds, right? It just becomes this abundance. So I ask as we prayerfully contribute to what we can to the church to remember we reap what we sow. And I believe our God will increase our harvest. And as Paul calls it, it's our harvest of righteousness. Amen. So we have a stewardship prayer today, and I want to do a blessing upon our um, items that we will be giving to social services. So um, our stewardship prayer is written by Anne Weems. Let us pray. She says, O oh Lord, forgive our fears that so stifle our stewardship. Forgive our giving in and our giving up. Instead of our giving ourselves to Christ's mission of love, remind us that our hope is in standing up and risking and taking our stewardship seriously. Help us remember, O oh Lord, that the stewardship question is not really how much will we give. The stewardship question is how will we spend what we have been given? We pray it will be faithfully and cheerfully. Amen. And then I'll bless these items here. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for the variety of ways in which we 
can use of our resources and the upbuilding of our community, but more importantly, it is the upbuilding of your kingdom here on earth. So bless the variety of food and wellness items that have been collected as they go to social services to bless those that are struggling in this particular season of life. May we do this not just to feel good about ourselves, but to do this work as a part of your calling to who we are as your people. We ask this all in your son's name. Amen. And today we have a responsive hymn verse um, for this gift. For tw- um, it'll be up here, 422, God who's giving knows no ending. come together at this time to share our joys and our concerns. Are there prayers that we'd like to lift up today? Adrian. Family of Andrash, um, name it. The family of Andrash. Michelle. Okay. Aww. Aww. Wonderful. Oh, congratulations to the family. Um, This morning there was breaking news that there was another um, mass shooting, this time in Colorado, at a LGBTQ dance club. Um, So prayers for that community and just complete heartbreak and senselessness of this behavior. Um, I also have a friend whose daughter is at UVA, and so again, there were three um, football players that were killed either this week or the week before by another player. Um, We've got to figure out as a nation how to deal with our anger and rage. Um, It's just, it's really just heartbreaking. Um, Other, oh, prayers for the people that five, six feet of snow. Um, That is just crazy. I just, if you know me, I'm like summer. (laughs) So, um, yeah, so prayers for for that, for the people dealing with that. Sue? Yeah, continue to pray for my sister Elaine. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. So prayers for Sue's sister. Other prayers? All right. Let us come before God in prayer. Gracious and loving God, on this week of Thanksgiving, we lift up the various ways in which people may be gathering with family and friends, but we also remember that some might not be. And so where there is festivities and places, there's also loneliness. Um, or a loss if someone has um, lost a loved one over the past year. So loving God, just um, as this community, help us remind others that they are not alone, that we hold them in our prayers and uh, send our uh, warm embrace to them through you. Loving God, we know there is just so much brokenness in the world, and that's why you call us. That's why you call us to be your people. You know there's work to do. You tell us the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. So help us to own the places where we are laboring, 
that we can't fix everything, but we can do what we do well. And so continue to bless this place, bless all of those that are impacted by our simple acts of love that we will we'll never meet. But let them understand how much we care. And so on this day of thanksgiving and blessings and gratitude and love, we are just grateful for all that you give to us in our lives and in this world. And as your people here in this place, let us unite our voices together and pray what Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn today is 138. This one's for um, Christ the King Sunday. Holy, holy, holy. relationship between spending and giving. And now, may the grace and peace of God, the Father Almighty, the reconciliation of the Son, and the guidance of the Holy Spirit be upon each and every one, now and forever. Amen. Before Jane starts, sorry, I cut you off. I completely forgot to, like, you're probably like, what is this ugly thing sitting down here? So in your stewardship letter, 
um, you are going to receive a puzzle piece. And there's directions in your letter as to what to do with this puzzle piece. So over the next month, I'm hoping this ugly cork board is going to become filled with the returned puzzle pieces and what the directions ask of you to do on it. So I forgot to completely mention that. So this was here for a reason to remind me. Um, and it, um, yes, so anyway, now you may play. <laughs> Thank uh -huh.